Hi, everyone. Good to see you again. Today, we're going to look at Chapter 8, Inverse Dynamics. Here's a quick outline for what we're going to do in this chapter. We'll start off with a quick motivating example. We've seen lots of examples of why joint moments could be useful, but we'll review uh, another one today. We'll talk about what is a joint moment. In particular, we'll point out that it's net joint moments that we're going to be computing in Chapter 8. And I'll come back to this idea a couple times. Finally, we'll look at the calculations we use to perform our inverse dynamic analysis. So here's a quick uh, example of why we might care about net joint moments. In fact, what we're plotting here is ankle power. This is power over the gate cycle on the x-axis, power on the vertical axis. On the left, we see a few plots here. So there's a light gray and a dark gray shaded region, same as on this plot. These are the uh, healthy control population. And this is the power generated at the ankle, uh, walking at two different speeds. The solid and the dashed lines show the ankle power generated for a paretic limb, someone after they've had a stroke and they have paralysis on that limb. And these lines on this plot here are the same for the same subjects, but on the unaffected limb. So we see that on the unaffected limb, they can generate ankle powers that are very similar to a healthy population. On the paretic limb, there's a lot less ankle power generated. And that can make locomotion difficult. And we can compute ankle power simply by knowing joint moments and angular velocities. So this is one example of why we care about joint moments. We'll see many other examples in the course. So let's remind ourselves where we are in this inverse dynamic analysis. We might have brought a subject into the lab to collect motion capture data. We've used inverse kinematics to compute the skeletal joint angles. We've taken derivatives, hopefully after some filtering if necessary, and computed ultimately the uh, joint angular velocities and angular accelerations. Now we'll use this information in an inverse dynamics analysis to compute the net joint moments. In chapter 9, we'll take it one step further and look at what the muscle forces must have been in order to generate these net joint moments. Now, one question you might ask is, why do we have this derivative block here? Why do we need to take derivatives? Well, if you think to Newton's second law, f equals ma, we have the analogous equation in the rotational domain. And so we'll need angular velocities of our joints to compute the net joint moments. So what is a joint moment? Well, we know that we have lots of biological structures across our joints, muscles, ligaments, and so on. What we're going to do in this chapter is collapse all these things down into equivalent forces and an equivalent net joint moment. Now, notice that this joint moment, and I've mentioned it already once, this joint moment is the net joint moment. It's not the actual moment that would be experienced in the joint, similarly with the forces. So I want you to think about this little experiment we can do. Think about holding your arm out, or you can try it yourself at home. Hold your arm out and just let your muscles relax. OK, so your arm is not moving. We have no net joint moments at the elbow. And now keep your arm where it is, still not moving, but tense all your muscles up. OK, still we have no acceleration. So the net joint moment is still 0. But there's going to be a lot more force in the joint when our muscles are tense. So that's an important distinction of what we're computing here. It's not the actual forces or actual moments that we would find in a biological joint. We need to know what the muscle forces were to compute those. So that's a quick introduction. Now let's jump over to the next video, and we'll look at the calculations involved.